Thanks for watching this episode of Angry Video Game Nerd on bad Final Fight games. But are you a bad enough dude to get Raycon's new everyday E25 earbuds? Raycon has some of the best wireless earbuds on the market. They're high-tech with Bluetooth pairing, six hours of playtime, and they recharge in their compact carrying case. They look stylish, fitting in your ears snugly and matching your style snugly. And clearly, they sound clear, which really matters to a music lover like me. Speaking of music, they were co-created by R&B singer Ray J and worn by P. Diddy and various other artists and celebrities. Lastly, they're affordable, starting at half the price of those other wireless earbuds on the market. And when you click our link in the description, you'll get 15% off your Raycon order. Head on over to buyraycon.com slash cinemassacre. He's gonna take you back to the past To play the shitty games and suck ass He'd rather have a buffalo Take a diarrhea dump in his ear He'd rather eat the rotten asshole Of a roadkill thump and down it with beer He's the angriest gamer you've ever heard Angry Nintendo nerd. He's the angry Atari Sega nerd. He's the angry video game nerd. If you've ever been to an arcade, you've probably played Capcom's premier brawler, Final Fight. It's a downright classic. Choosing your favorite character and then laying waste to the dregs of Metro City was a rite of passage for all those who had stepped into the hollowed halls of the local video arcade. While today, Capcom is more known for its overabundance of Street Fighter and Resident Evil sequels, back then, they were revolutionizing the beat-em-up genre. They took what Double Dragon and Renegade had started and sought to improve and innovate. While Bimmy and Jimmy were basically just palette swaps, Guy, Cody, and Hagar were three unique fighters with different movesets and styles. The gameplay was satisfying, the sound of the hits was bone-rattling, and the music was simply badass. Also, what other game lets you play as a hulking, pro-wrestling mayor beating his own citizens into submission? The answer is final goddamn fight. Of course, contrary to the name, it wasn't the final final fight. There were sequels and spin-offs out the ass. Many members of the Final Fight cast would even go on to become mainstays in the Street Fighter franchise. Guy and Cody appeared back in the Alpha series, along with Sodom and Relento. Later on, others such as Andor, also known as Hugo, Poison, and Abigail would square up in the iconic Torment Fighter. So what in the holy name of shit happened to Final Fight? Capcom jizzes out tons of Street Fighters and Resident Evils all the time, but why aren't we getting any new Final Fight games? Was it actually final? I mean, even Streets of Rage, a game that was meant to be a competitor to Final Fight, is actually still going strong with a fourth title just released. Well, here I have the two Final Fight games that any fan of Final Fight will tell you fuck the franchise into oblivion. They were released just over six years apart and were created by the same developer, Capcom USA, also known as Capcom Studio 8. So here we have Final Fight Revenge for the Sega Saturn and Final Fight Streetwise for PlayStation 2. We'll start with Final Fight Revenge. Now, you'll notice by the jewel case that this is a Japan-only release. So it comes in a regular CD jewel case instead of the gargantuan American Saturn case. The great thing about the Saturn is you don't need to mod it to play Japanese games. All you need is one of these things, an action replay. Now, I know the review is about Final Fight games, but bear with me a minute, I gotta talk about this graphic design. The box pissed me off so much I had to research fonts. The sticker on the actual cartridge itself is using Bauhaus MDBT, but the logo on the box is Arial Black, and on the bottom, they use Algerian. But that's not all. When you turn this son of a bitch over, they commit the ultimate graphic design sin. They used motherfucking Comic Sans. At least it's not Papyrus, or Papyrus Sans. Oh, oh, make it stop! It's hideous! I don't even want to look at it anymore! I'd rather huff a doggy bag full of bison turds! And I'm talking M. Bison. Okay, let's play the game. 
Final Fight Revenge is the only game in the series that's an actual tournament fighter, probably because it's real lousy. The game just has a stiff and almost unresponsive feel at times, especially compared to any of the Street Fighter games. Honestly, this one ranks down there with Street Fighter the movie, the game. And I'm talking the arcade version. That being said, the game is actually pretty cool if you're a fan of the Final Fight series. It's got most of the characters from the game, only missing a couple of bosses and minor enemies. The graphics are colorful and vibrant, and the gameplay itself is interesting. You're already dead. It focuses less on the technical side and more on all-out brawling. Levels are littered with weapons you can pick up and use against your opponent like guns, knives, pipes, and even bazookas. It took me a minute to figure out how to pick them up though but with a little practice, I was actually kicking ass. Now, I'm no expert when it comes to fighting games, but maybe that's what I enjoy about this. It's silly and fun while still offering a challenge. But you wanna see some weird shit, don't you? Check this out. The special moves are some of the weirdest I've seen in a fighting game. Even the ones that make sense are still really weird. Guy hits you with an explosion, then the perspective changes, and he whips shurikens at the opponent while they try to run away. I've never seen something like this before in a tournament fighter, where the perspective shifts to behind the player? It's used a lot, too. Rolento chases you down with a helicopter, and Eddie E turns into a police car and tries to run you down. Hagar's took me a good minute to figure out. I had no idea what the hell was happening at first. Hagar just hugs the air, and nothing happens. It turns out that it only works if your enemy does a jump kick towards you. Like I said, I'm not an expert in fighting games. Sometimes I have trouble pulling off a Hadouken. But this is like two Hadoukens in a row, then kick, and your enemy has to be jump kicking. Oh, and don't get me started on Hagar's second special move because you have to rotate the D-pad in a 360 motion twice! He might as well not even have a special. The one special move that makes absolutely no sense to me is Poisons. She blows a kiss at you, which then causes a bunch of pictures to flash on the screen. They're all really suggestive photos of her too. She's licking a popsicle, posing all sexy and shit. I don't get how this would hurt you. I mean, I understand shooting shurikens at someone or chasing them down in an attack helicopter, but how the fuck is blowing a kiss then flashing sexy pictures supposed to hurt someone. Also, if you pull this attack off as the final blow, she dances on a stripper pole. Again, how does this hurt? You basically just battle your way through every fighter until you get to Belger or Belger or whatever, the final boss from the original final fight. Only this time, he stopped living and became a crazy mixed up zombie. He can stretch out like Dawson and even lose limbs as you're fighting him. It's by far the weirdest thing up until this point. That is, until the credits, when he does the fucking thriller dance. Yeah. So that's Final Fight Revenge. Uh, overall, it makes my bowels bubble. I mean, not spray diarrhea or anything like that, just a, uh, you know, wet fart. Eh. This game's pretty rare and fetches a pretty high price, and it's honestly just not worth it to me. You'd either have to be a Final Fight mega fan to pay money for this, or be somebody who's addicted to buying shit and have no concept in the value of money. You'd have to be a total loser. Thanks, Matt McMuscles, for sending me your copy. Well, here we go. Time for Final Fight Streetwise, the final nail in Final Fight's coffin. Finally. So, here's a question for you. Did you ever drink a bunch of blue Powerade and then take a bright green shit? If so, that's basically this game's entire color palette. Everywhere you look are shades of shit, barf, and piss. Everything is covered in a dense fog like somebody wiped their ass all over the camera lens. I honestly can't tell if you're supposed to be in Metro City or Purgatory. It reminds me of Spawn the Eternal for the PlayStation and doesn't really look that much better. And mind you, this game came out in 2006. That's right, take a long look at this and realize this game came out the same year the PS3 debuted. The gameplay is a mixture of running around aimlessly, mashing buttons, and trying to suppress the burning urge to turn the PS2 off and chuck it through your neighbor's window. You play as a guy named Kyle, who's the roided up douchebag brother of Cody from the original Final Fight. Pretty much what happens is your brother Cody gets kidnapped by a guy named The Stiff, and you have to get him back. On the way, you have to complete fetch quests and play a bunch of stupid mini games. 
These offer you money, which you can use to buy new moves, but all they really do is grind the game to a halt. You can play the world's most boring game of darts, three-card Monty, and even a shooting gallery with rubber ducks that make chicken noises for some reason. One of the most frequent mini-games is destroying cars. This is kind of like an homage to the mini-game in the original Final Fight and Street Fighter 2, but it happens a lot. What's wrong with these people? I mean, imagine walking down the street and all of a sudden somebody comes up to you and says, hey, I'll give you 200 bucks to destroy this person's car. <laughs> That'd be pretty awesome, actually. The game tries insanely hard to be edgy at every possible second. There's a sign here for blue ball video. Come get some. Oh man, if I played this back when I was 15, I'm sure I'd have given that a chuckle. But I've matured since then and moved on to shit jokes. Also, check out this billboard for Slipknot. It's kind of random, but fucking awesome. The game is filled with sexual references that aged like fine heavy cream behind a radiator, especially when you get to the porn theater. I tried running around punching the dude sitting in the theater, but it didn't work, unfortunately. Imagine that, watching a porn movie with your half chub and a dude runs over and clocks you in the fucking jaw. Uncool, man. Another weird thing about this theater is the music. It was driving me insane because I could have sworn I heard it somewhere. Then I realized it's all made with Apple GarageBand music loops. Just listen. Also, when you interrogate the boss here, the music is the same as the ending theme to America's Court with Judge Kevin Ross. Have it your way. Don't ask me how I know that. The game boils down to run here, talk to that guy, run there, fight that guy, run back here, talk to and fight that guy, and then fight a boss, rinse and repeat. It's monotonous and gives me some serious Life of Black Tiger vibes. Eventually, you start fighting zombies or some shit and get to meet up with former mayor Mike Hagar like three hours into the game, which is cool, I guess. Honestly, if it weren't for him showing up, I think I would have forgotten I was playing a final fight game. I can see why this was the final final fight. So here I'm gonna help this cop find some gun runners or some shit. I find the first guy, give him a good stabbing, and the game crashed. Eh, whatever. I'll just reset and load my game. It didn't auto save? <laughs> Silly me. I mean, why, why would I assume that? I mean, a game that came out in 2006 when uh, Xbox 360, Wii, and PS3 were all already out. I mean, why would I assume that this game would autosave? Excuse me for just one minute. Fuck! Hello? Hey, is this the angry video game nerd? Yeah, who the fuck is this? Matt McMuscles. I didn't order any muscles. Who is this? Uh, the guy you stole Final Fight Revenge from in Portland. You mean borrowed Final Fight Revenge from in Portland. I agree to disagree. So, judging by the shifting tectonic activity in my area and the loud echoing of fuck we heard throughout Canada, I'm guessing you assumed Final Fight Streetwise would not lie to you about its save feature. Not only does it not autosave, it only saves after certain missions have been finished. It's, it's a whole stupid thing. You lost all your progress, right? Sure did. Wow, Matt, you hit the nail on the head. If only I knew some magnum dong loser who played this game an ungodly amount of times and could fill me in on anything I missed that would be worth mentioning. Well, lucky for you, I'm a magnum dong loser. Let me break it down for you. 
After meeting up with Mayor Mustache and killing the Stiff, Kyle eventually finds his way to Guy, who is now the crime boss who runs Metro City's Japantown. He sicks a crazy tattoo artist on you, whose ass you kick, and then everyone just becomes friends. Meanwhile, other criminals from uh, Italian Town decide to burn down Guy's house, with you in it. It's a horrible escape mission with a time limit that doesn't fuck around. After that, some generic edgelord called Blade starts pestering you, cause he's the new bad guy, I guess. And then suddenly, Cody appears, remember him? Who's now become a drug zombie, because he injected himself with the T-Virus from Resident Evil. Also, seems like Blades is not the new bad guy, but is instead working for the only priest Metro City has. You then kill Blades, only for the Stiff to show up again, who's now a weird monster that eats rats. See, Kyle finds a secret umbrella lab deep underground, where someone is resurrecting all the defeated bosses. So you'll fight zombie monster Blades again, the porn theater guy shows back up, and they're all named after the four horsemen of the apocalypse, because subtlety. Also, don't forget this ten tub of fuck right here, gross. While that shit is happening, the city is being ripped apart by all the other drug zombies, and Hagar doesn't even care anymore. He, he just leaves the game by this point. So, it's up to Kyle to have the frustrating and tedious final fight against two bosses at the same time, on top of a church, and it's the worst thing ever. Well, thanks, Matt. I'll always remember you. Great. Uh, so, hey, do you like need my address so you can ship my game back or something? It's really ex Well, that settles it. All right, first one to get fucked up is Final Fight Streetwise. And since it's written in a graffiti font, let's do it graffiti style. And I'll even use the game's own barf shit piss palette. And you, Final Fight Revenge, I will spare you a spray painting and instead condemn you to a long and drawn out process of Sega Saturn disc rot. You will forever be placed in a dark corner in the nerd room where the chemicals in your plastic degrade and you slowly wither. Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 ha!